these things are decimating entire ecosystems and they're sold under innocuous sounding names like a dove or oil of Olay. <clears throat> In the past two episodes, I mapped my microbiome and then I learned about probiotics. A lot of people take probiotics. They don't work really well. I mean, least. not right now because we don't know how to make them. That's absolutely correct. Though the majority of our microbiome is located in our gut, there is also a microbial ecosystem on our skin. As we learn more about the relationship between these microbes and our health, some people are questioning whether all the cosmetic products we apply to our skin are a good idea. That includes soap. So I talked to someone who learned to go without it, a journalist named Julia Scott. Hi. So, Julia, you went a month without doing what? I went a month without using soap, shampoo, deodorant, cleanser, moisturizer, anything that could make me look or smell even remotely good. You started spraying yourself with a bacterium. Yes, so I, I became a human guinea pig in one of the weirdest experiments you could possibly imagine. That experiment was spraying herself with live bacteria, a species called Nitrosomonas eutropha. It's a bacteria that's normally found in the soil, which most of us aren't exposed to that much anymore. It lives off of ammonia, so it changes our skin chemistry in ways that, at least according to the people who sell it, could help stop us from smelling. How'd it go for you? Did you smell terrible? I did not smell like roses. Mm -hmm. I got some comments, like I smelled like uh, onions. I would say that if I saw any benefits or differences really, it was I found that my skin took on a natural kind of moisturizer. So I, I wasn't embarrassed, I didn't have any acne in spite of you know, not using any products to ward that off. Julia got her bacteria spray from a doctor named Larry Weiss. His company, AO Biome, developed it and implies that it could be used as a soap alternative. Their theory is that the bacteria we're constantly washing off in an effort to be clean might actually be good for us. So this oil that people are washing off their skin all yeah. the time, that's there to protect us. Right. And we keep washing it off, and what happens is our skin's trying to replace it. I saw in a commercial though that you need to get the little swab things and carry them in your pocket to wash the oil off. Wash the oil off. Otherwise no one will like you. Let's see if we can restore it. So let's rebuild something that is as close as possible to what it is that the healthy state looks like. Okay. So this is one of those components. This is this is a product with this with is hydrochloric in, acid? Um, no, no, no. So as we start migrating people away from products that contain chemicals and preservatives that are not native to our physiology, we're going to need to put things back for them. I cultivated an alien colony of bacteria on my skin. Alien um, to you. Alien. But not alien to horses. Yes, that's true. Uh, apparently, this particular kind of bacteria, Nitrosomonas eutropha, lives on horses and other animals that have contact with dirt and nature. These are common soil bacteria. So they are found everywhere in nature. So they pulled up water from a sub-Antarctic lake about a year and a half ago, and it had been isolated for about a million to a million and a half years. And there were ammonia oxidizing bacteria in there. So we've made our skin less livable than a frozen Arctic lake. We started applying chemistry that we knew very little about to this organ system, the microbiome, that we hadn't even acknowledged existed. What could go wrong with that? You know, it took me a month to cultivate a healthy colony of nitrosomonas on my skin, and it turns out that it only took me three showers to completely extirpate the colony, which was sad because I had grown to enjoy the little buggers, but also because it really says something about the powerful products that we're using. Since then, I've stopped using any of the skincare products that I was using prior to the experiment, and I only wash my face with the water, and that's it. She convinced me to try it. Not the spray, but just not using shampoo or soap on my body. And at first, I smelled bad. But after a while, I didn't. And just to make sure I wasn't crazy, I talked to one of the pioneers of microbiome research, Martin Blazer. What do you do in terms of applying chemistry to your skin microbiome, meaning soap? You know, I think it's fair to say that I, I almost never shower. You and me both. But I almost always bathe. Oh, <laughs> gosh, I wasn't expecting that one. Yes, Curveball. Yes. Yeah. But I, I think there's a fundamental principle that there are good bugs and there are bad bugs. Good bugs that help us to live our lives. So if you're removing your good bugs through soaps or cosmetics or antibiotics or hand cleansers, etc., uh, you may not be doing yourself any favors. Even though you think 
that you're cleaner. You may not be. So except for washing my hands, which is definitely still recommended, I stopped using soap. But that doesn't mean everyone has to or should. It just means a lot of people could cut back and save some time and money and possibly even be better off. Yep, only two products. Checks out. Get out. I'll see show myself out. <laughs>